Marta's hub husband, Michael, had written uh, a great theme song for Dream On, so we definitely wanted him involved again. And um, so Michael wrote something that, um, the way I remember it, was uh, a very, you know, he kind of keyed off of uh, Phoebe's character, I think, more than every, anything else. And the, there was a very, you know, sitarish, raga kind of uh, theme song, and it kind of went, I'll be there for you, I'll be there for you. And that's all it was, you know, that. And um, so I sat with Michael, and I remember saying to him, you know, we need something that has a vibe like a Beatles song or Credence Clearwater. We need something that when you hear the intro, mm -hmm. you know immediately it's that song and no other song in the world. So if you listen to the Beatles, I feel fine. You know, you know it's no other song. No other song starts it. I said, we need that. That's what it needs to have. That kind of catchiness. Beatles go. So, <laughs> so uh, Michael came back with a demo. It was all instrumental, except for part of the chorus. And basically, it's the song is, is, is the way, you know, we all know it. But all there was, what, and it was, I'll be there for you. Ba -da 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 -da. I'll be there. So that's as much of it as it was. And um, so then uh, we needed a lyricist. And um, my uh, an agent that I knew from doing variety shows and knew a lot of people. I said, "Yeah, I need a lyricist." And she said, uh, "Do you know Allie Willis, uh, who wrote September?" I go, "No, I know I don't know Allie Willis, but I love September. That's good." So we got with Allie, and uh, she wrote the lyrics, and. Um, and then uh, we needed to find a somebody to perform it. So I was asking a lot of people, but uh, the bands didn't want to perform it if they didn't write it. Mm -hmm. um, so I uh, finally found the Rembrandts, and I was aware of them. They had a, a hit at the time called uh, That's the Way It Is, Baby. And um, we got together with them, and uh, they brought so much to it. And... Uh, then shortly after that, after the show got started, some DJ in Buffalo edited, to get, edited together out of our theme song, a full length radio version of the theme. Huh. And people started requesting it and it became hot and they started you know, picking it up on other radio stations. And so the Rembrandts had finished their album and their new album was about to come back when the record company Electra said, hold the phone. Either this song is on that album or we're not releasing the album. We want that Friends theme on the album. And, you know, it's a funny thing. It probably would have been the single of the year that year. It certainly got played on the radio more than yeah. anything else. But uh, Vanity got in the way and uh, they didn't want to release it as, as an official single. So Because they didn't write it? Yeah. Uh -huh. So, uh, so <laughs> it, it got released however it was released and it got played an awful lot and yeah. became like a song of the summer, which was, that's when I really knew that we were something else. Uh, you know, I knew the show was doing good and getting popular, but I felt like they're playing our song on the yeah. radio. Uh, that's big. It did two things. I think certainly it stood the test the time, so I will say that the results were positive. But I think, you know, for a period of time, there was the Friends backlash. Uh, which started in the second season. And I think there was just that moment in time where it felt like we had overstepped our bounds. You know, the <laughs> Friends was everywhere. It was in a Diet Coke commercial. It was on the radio. And it felt like to a certain degree you couldn't get away from it. So I think uh, uh, while the theme song, I think, in the bottom line, was a great thing for the show, uh, there was that little point of uh, mm. it was getting people a little sick of the show. I still love the theme song because uh, I love it because I remember as I'm listening to it each time, I sort of just brings up in me everything about those sessions, how many times we mixed and remixed it because uh, we'd do it in the studio and then play it on the air and it didn't sound the same on the air as it did in the studio. So we kept trying for that elusive uh, sound that we finally settled on. and. Um, uh, 
you know, doing the recording session. You know, I, I'm, I'm a huge music fan. So I think somewhere inside I really wanted to be a record producer probably more than I wanted to be a television producer. So this was uh, a great chance and a great experience for me.